David Nunes, you were the king of, of your move, Martian Parsons, Reed Reigns. You were the king of LSL, if you don't mind me saying. Um, you're now with Brief Your Market, so now you've taken a slight step out of the industry. What are your thoughts on the future of UK estate agency? And I'd like you to bring in such things as online versus high street, cheap fees, overvaluing, and everything else to do with that. So far away, because let's be honest, if anyone's going to know, you are going to be the man. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so, put the record straight, Ian Crabb is the king of, uh, of LSL with uh, Simon Embley as the chairman, and, uh, and they were my bosses. And, uh, um, uh, anyway, so, 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 yeah, well, I'm not sure about that, but anyway. So, um, uh, my views on the market then, first of all, I think it's been a really tough time for agents over the last couple of years. Um, uh, and and there's, no, there's no immediate light at the end of the tunnel to say that, you know, 2019, 2020 are, are going to get any better. So for me, the market for agents is going to be about making the most of every penny they've got to spend and making sure they're spending that in the, in the right way on marketing, on people, on, on, on everything they've got to do day to day to make their business run. Um, what, what are the headwinds? I think uncertainty in the, in the, in the UK economy overall is the, is the biggest headwind and always has been. Um, so people will talk about Brexit. I think if you stopped and asked somebody in the street, well, what exactly is it about Brexit that's making you nervous about moving? I'm not sure they can answer with, with any specific real detail. Do you think it's the go-to excuse? Um, no, I think there genuinely is a, a, a fear of what's going to happen in the future. I'm not sure people are um, uh, you know, well enough versed in exactly what that means, but I think people are nervous about what's going to happen with my job, what's going to happen mm -hmm. with the economy, what impact is there going to be on house prices? So should I buy now or should I wait and just wait and see what happens? And people naturally and understandably will wait, I think, and see see what mm -hmm. happens uh, and what's around the corner. Mm -hmm. Apart from those people that have got to move for jobs and, uh, you know, expanding families and, and those kind of things. So the, the housing market has some uncertainty, but I think with that uncertainty comes opportunity for the agents that are well geared up and that use the right marketing approach and um, and, and it's an opportunity for them to take market share. I what think. about this, um, the, 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 the growth of the online markets, predominantly purple bricks, obviously they've taken yep. the lion's share. Do you think that will continue to grow? I mean, it, it's, they're nowhere near where they said they would be five years ago or four years ago. No, but let's face it, they've done well. So um, in, in terms of the, so they're probably the largest estate agency business in the UK now. If you take the total number of instructions and divide it by the average number of instructions per branch, you know, they're, they're, they're bigger, they're the same size or bigger than, than Countrywide, which is the UK's, the UK's biggest. So hats off, they've done a good job in terms of taking uh, market share. How sustainable their model is going forward with their international expansion and, you know, what's happened in some of the other countries they've gone into, uh, you know, we, we need to wait and see. Uh, but they have taken market share and they are the, the dominant online agent. Why do you think, I mean, I, I looked at the numbers. In 2004, there was about 9,500 estate agents. Today, there's about eighteen or 19,000 estate agents. But the number of houses that are being sold, um, if you go back to 2004, it was about 1.8 million. It's going to be about 1.1. 1 .1. Yeah. So you've, 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 got the, you've had the number of agents go like that, yeah. the number of house uh, sales go like that. Yeah. Do you think that growth in estate agencies will continue to grow? Um, it's hard to see how it can, isn't it? Because the market is is contracted. Because so, fees are really bad, you know. This yeah, the impact of more agents and also the online agents has been there's been a, a downward pressure on fees. And if you look at the PLC reports on that, it, it talks about them quite openly in terms of the uh, the pressure there's been on fees. Um, uh, and it's hard to see that that's easily going to be reversed. So there's a smaller cake and there's a smaller portion of the cake available for everybody at, at a lesser value, which is clearly not a, not a great situation. Uh, why do you think the likes of LSL and, um, and Connells have done reasonably well compared to the likes of Countrywide? Um, I, I think that is entirely down to um, strategy and tactics of the senior management team and then the execution of that by the people at branch level. Um, I, I wouldn't want to comment on other people who haven't done very well. I can talk about the people ha who have yes. done well. So Alisal's a great business with a great management team. So is yeah, Connells. they just get on. They just, they, they, they're in the background, both LSL and, and Connells. They, you know, they don't wave their flags. No. They just, they just quietly, quietly get on, get with, on it with it in the background and, and, um, and keep evolving and keep moving forwards and keep diversifying and you know inventing new ways, better ways of doing things, creating new income streams for themselves and, um, and, and through that have remained strong 
um, and have kept fighting for market share. You know, it's as simple as that. Um, what, what are, what's your thoughts on the pressure on fees? Do you think estate agents should charge more? Or how could they charge more? Um, yeah, I, th I think kind of you can charge as much as the market will bear. And when you've got lots of people advertising on national television in 20 million pound, you know, advertising campaigns saying, um, uh, effectively, they'll sell it for nothing. It, the message says that, which is what the customer thinks. It's then very difficult to be pushing fees up. Um, so there's been a natural push down on fees because of the uh, because of the competition. Is that advertising our, much cheaper? Is fees. that our fault as an industry for not proving worth? Um, I think consumers. Because let's be honest, Waitrose is a lot more expensive than Lidl, and they still they're still supermarkets. Yes. Is it, do you think there is a? Do you think you know that there are the cheaper end brands, and there's the Savills at one end. Yep. Some people say the middle ground is gonna is gonna be barren, and people are either gonna have to get posh and up. That's not a word, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Boutique up yep. or, or cheap and down. Do, where's your thoughts on the? Do you think the corporates can line the middle, or do you think they're gonna have to change? Yeah, I think um, uh, I think the whole market, from a fee structure point of view, has moved down. Uh, that there's no doubt about that, and it's much more difficult to get a a, a, a big full fee than uh, as as used to be the case. Why is that? I think um, customers have seen, have seen there's more choice out there. Okay. Um, the TV advertising campaigns launched by the online agents oh. have been really fee-led, haven't they? The commissary campaign oh. by Purple Bricks was entirely about about fee. So when that's you know, pushed very heavily across you know, a key oh. media channel like TV, it's, it's very difficult to, to fight against that. Do you, th do you think we as an industry train our valuers enough to try and get higher fees? Um, I think probably... There isn't enough training done in terms of how to get higher fees. I think in some businesses there is, and there's a lot of focus put on that. Um, but, but generally, probably, um, people will be worried about quoting too big a fee in case they don't win the instruction. Yeah. And if they don't win the instruction, they clearly aren't going to earn any money. So, right. so they would prefer to charge a slightly lower fee and win the instruction uh, and all the things that then go with that instruction in terms of other products. So probably not focusing so much on the fee, but looking at greater wallet share of getting this convincing and the, and the solicitors and the, all the little extras. Yeah. Because let's be honest, the corporates are a lot better at that than the independents, aren't they? Um, I don't know. I think lots of the independents. So part of it is do you want to offer your customer a full, fat, round service mm -hmm. that, that incorporates everything, or do you just want to try and sell them a house or, 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 um, or sell their property for them? Um, I, I think some of the bigger agents more... Uh, soon, have got a grip of offering a, yes. a you know a complete package to customers rather than just one piece of it. But I think the market's caught up with that, and I think lots mm. of agents now offer um, other services that customers need um, a, a, around the house sale. So, where that, one final question on this on this video: Where do you see estate agency in the next ten or twenty years? Um, wow, twenty years a long way out. Very difficult to call even even ten years a long way out. Between now and the next five years. Um, my view originally was that the online agents would take a bigger and bigger growing share and I thought they'd do it much more quickly than they have done and I thought that would be a, would be a real threat to uh, traditional agents. Um, uh, I, I don't see that happening as quickly as everybody thought it would do um, but I still think it's going to be tough for, um, oh. for traditional agents because I can't see over the next one to two years the market getting significantly better. And that's where good marketing comes in and maybe this is what we've been talking about in the other videos and if you want to watch and find out what we've talk, been talking about on how to get maximum, squeeze the maximum out of your marketing spend then watch some of these videos that we're doing now. So thank you very much. Dave. Thanks Chris.